destroyed by high times around 1986-87 and um, I had uh, initially tried marijuana probably when I was around 15, 16 years old and um, I, I thought it was, uh, you know, I thought it was good. I mean, I never became a daily smoker or anything and um, I, um, I figured it was bad for you, like alcohol, you know, so, but when I, I, I didn't have a problem with it. I never turned it down, let me put it that way. I never really went around trying to find it, but if I was at a party and somebody offered me a pot, I would you know, always take a hit. You know. But it never, it never became a big part of my life or anything. Uh, so when I was offered a job at High Times, um, I didn't have a problem with High Times. Um, and uh, I just, um, I figured I'd be there for a few months. They ended up offering me the job of editor, and then I started doing a little more research into the magazine. That led to a bunch of, um, you know, like a cascade of revelations. Because the first thing I did was look into the medical facts, because I wanted people to know, okay, if it's going to be bad for you, like alcohol, at least let's know what what the ramifications are. And I uh, couldn't really find anything long term. Couldn't find any problems with long term daily users. They didn't have any health problems. So uh, then the next thing was uh, I stumbled across this manuscript by this guy named Jack Herrera called The Emperor Wears No Clothes. After I read that I realized they were making 20,000 different things out of the plant and they made it illegal. And they didn't really tell people about any of this stuff but what they basically done is they wiped off the major fiber crop of the world and replaced it with synthetics, with nylon, all at the same time. So, you know, the laws came in and suddenly nylon took over. It seemed like the fix had been put in for the petrochemical industry. So then uh, the next thing I started to research was um, the, uh, the real history of the plant. And by that I mean the spiritual history of the plant because you will realize the initial stoner culture of the world were the what most people call the Scythians, which they called themselves the Sakas, which was a culture that really emanated out of Russia and uh, or the, the Ukraine area basically. This was the first culture to domesticate horses, and it this culture kind of took over the world. In a and their spiritual sacrament was was cannabis. Their whole life was built around cannabis. They, you know, made their houses out of it, made their clothes out of it. They and uh, it was it was uh, a nomad culture. So they they created the first uh, covered wagons, chariots, stuff like that. They were horsemen and really into uh, bows and arrows too. And you know, obviously they used hemp for just about everything. And uh, they started, at a certain point, they were, they were throwing the flowers onto hot coals and building little teepees and going inside the teepee to get high. And, but then at a certain point in time, they discovered that you could mix it with, with hot milk. And suddenly the teepee thing went out and uh, the, the drinking of the milk became known as Soma or Hyoma, and it spread globally. And it completely changed the nature of spirituality. It became the dominant, kind of the dominant spiritual force until the Romans kind of took over spirituality and removed the marijuana and replaced it with alcohol. So when I, but in its origins, Judaism, Christianity, Zarathustrianism, uh, even Hinduism, Buddhism, all this stuff you find at the beginnings when it's formulated this Soma Hyoma drinking cult. And all this history, you know, from, from the historical spiritual origins to the historical um, industrial uses of the plant at the time that it was made illegal, 
all this stuff was kind of just hidden from view. Nobody really understood what was at stake here. So, uh, you know, I became uh, a, an activist to change the laws in 1988 when I became editor. Organized the first hemp tour with Jack Herrera in 1989. We traveled around the country. We created what were the largest political rallies of our time, like the Boston Freedom Rally. 100,000 people showed up. And now we're talking like this is 1989, 1990. 100,000 people are showing up in Boston Commons to protest the marijuana laws. And, you know, the national media never really gave us any credit. But uh, those were the biggest political events of their time in the 1980s. And... Uh